Hello lovelies. Today we're going to be having a nice long chat about fountain pens and everything I've learned about them this past year and a half. I fell really deep into the fountain pen rabbit hole and wanted to share with you sort of a beginner's guide or almost like a fountain pen 101 of everything that I've learned. Now, I am not a fountain pen expert by any means, but a lot of you guys have asked me a ton of questions and also friends of mine have asked me a ton of questions since I keep blabbing about fountain pens and how much I love them. I wanted to answer all of those questions and put them into one video that I can refer to my friends or anyone new to the fountain pen world. So to get started, why on earth would someone want a fountain pen when there are cheaper options out there like those big ballpoint pens or the gel pens? But for me, it's really easy. They're just beautiful. I feel like fountain pens are the most custom writing experience you could get. A writing tool is just such a personal choice and I feel like fountain pens give you countless combos to choose from in order to get your ultimate writing experience. You can choose from different nib sizes to the pen size and shape, even the colors and filling mechanism. You could also put any type of ink color you could ever think of in a fountain pen. You can even customize your fountain pen nib and have it ground to exactly how you like it. Another reason is comfort. I feel like when I'm writing with a fountain pen, I can write for hours. You don't need to put any pressure on there since the ink just freely flows versus a regular ballpoint pen. I feel like fountain pens are perfect if your hand tends to get tired very easily or just get strained from long writing sessions. I also find that the nib actually encourages you to write a little bit neater too since you have to kind of take your time and write a little more intentionally. And another thing is that they are more sustainable. Technically they're better for the environment too since you can refill a pen countless times and I feel like the materials used to make these pens are significantly higher quality and they will last you an entire lifetime. I feel like a fountain pen is almost like a traveler's notebook where you have this cover that you use for many years and eventually that fountain pen will be worn into that specific angle that you write over time especially with the gold nibs. It's something that truly completes that analog lifestyle and is something fun that you could pass on to loved ones to cherish just as much as you did. So to start off with the fountain pen anatomy. So this is a basic fountain pen. It is a sailor. And the first thing you're gonna see is that pen clip, a pen cap, this part is the pen body, and the ends are called the finials, and I will show you in my other colorful sailor. The pink parts are the finials. This specific pen is a screw cap, and other ones are tension fit, which you just pop open. And inside the cap of your fountain pen is a, it can be any color, but usually it's a clear inner cap. And I believe this helps to keep the pen from drying out. And here are the threads and 
the grip section where you actually grip the pen. You have the nib itself and the feed, which feeds the ink through the pen. When you unscrew the body, you reveal either a cartridge or a converter, which is what holds the ink inside the pen. A lot of times you have to purchase a converter separately, but some pens do come with its own converter and almost always a pen will come with a cartridge so you can start writing with a pen right away. The second pen you'll find is a piston filling pen and this is basically a pen with its built-in converter. These pens you can only use with bottled ink and it has the same things as the previous pen. There's a cap, inside has an inner cap and the top would be considered the finial. The bottom portion of the pen has a little twist knob which acts the same way as a converter does in a standard pen. Now with these pens you cannot use any cartridges in it. The filling mechanism is built into the pen. You can twist the knob up and down to draw ink into the pen. Now this pen is a demonstrator which means it's a clear pen, so you'll be able to see the feed going all the way through the grip section. And again, you have a nib and a feed as well. The third most popular option, and the last one I have to share with you, is the vacuum filler. And this pen is the same as the others. This one is a cigar shape, and this one has the body, the cap, a clip, a finial, here is the grip section, the nib, and the feet as well. Now for this one, I'm going to empty the ink very quickly just to show you the inside of this pen. And I suppose I'll show you how to fill it as well since I'm already here doing it. Now that it's empty, you will be able to see the inside of the pen. There's a little plunger and when you twist the blind cap or the screw cap, it will allow the plunger to release. And from there, when you press the plunger down, it creates this massive suction that will fill the entire pen in one quick press. And I suppose I'll show you, it's a lot faster than the standard cartridge fill. And it is the most satisfying thing. All these pens that I have here are for bottled inks. But if you do want a pen that is more versatile, you can purchase some that use cartridges as well. With some pens, you can only use proprietary cartridges. And proprietary just means that they are items made specifically for the pen. For example, this pen requires a specific type of sailor cartridge. The same thing goes with the converter. You need to use a proprietary converter. You can't just use any standard converter. This Traveler's Company pen is a good example of a pen that uses short international cartridges. A lot of compact or pocket pens tend to use the short international cartridges and won't have a proprietary converter. Moving on to nibs. I know a lot of people talk about nib size in terms of the line width of a pen, but I don't feel like many people talk about the actual nib size, like how large the actual metal part of the nib is. I find that a lot of steel nibs like the Caveco or this Twisby Eco is a number five and it's a lot smaller than my gold nib pen. And 
This goes for preference, whether you want to be closer to the page with a smaller nib or a little farther away. And you can find nibs in different metals such as stainless steel, stainless steel coated nibs, you have gold plated nibs as well as solid gold nibs. Now for the sizing, Japanese nibs and German nibs are a bit different. Japanese nibs tend to be a size smaller than the German nibs and I'm going to be writing down with the nibs that I have in order to sort of show you the line widths and how German and Japanese nibs compare to one another. The first one is a Japanese fine which is a super super skinny line and I personally love fine nibs. The Japanese fine is comparable to a German extra fine nib. German nibs, the smallest size will be the extra fine. With Japanese, you can go extra fine and even ultra extra fine or needlepoint as well. And on this page, you can see that the German extra fine and Japanese fine are very similar to one another. This next one, even though it's a traveler's company pen, it is a German nib. And this one is a traditional German fine nib. And you can see that it is a hair thicker than the German extra fine and the Japanese fine. The next pen is a Japanese medium pen. And again, you can expect a Japanese nib to be finer than a German one. So this one is comparable to a German fine. This next pen is a German medium nib and it's a lot thicker than the Japanese fine. And the final pen size I have because as I mentioned before, I am a fine girl. This one is the Japanese broad and this one is comparable to a German medium. There are other nibs such as an extra broad, an italic nib, cursive nibs, but generally these are the most common nib sizes you'll find. To sort of help compare these pens to regular pens, I have here one of my finer gel pens and this is a 0.38 millimeter thickness and I feel like it's very similar to the Japanese fine and the German extra fine. So if you are a person that likes to use finer pens, I would recommend going with either an extra fine or a fine in German and for Japanese I would definitely go with a fine. This next pen is a 0.5 millimeter gel pen and I feel like this one kind of goes with the German fine, maybe the Japanese medium as well. It's very similar. And the last pen that I had to dig from the depths of my drawers is this Inkjoy pen and it is one millimeter. And I wanna say it is definitely closer to a German medium. It's a little bit thinner than the German medium. That could be because of the ink that is in there. It could have a wetter ink, which will cause the line to appear a bit thicker. If you're a person that uses regular ballpoint pens, I feel like a medium nib would be perfect for every day. Moving on to inks and ink properties. First, let's go over the different types of inks you can choose from. I'm not gonna show you the different colors because the colors are endless but I will show you the different property types of ink you can get. This first one is a standard ink, meaning there is no shimmer and no sheening. Some of them may be shading inks, while others may be more uniform. And shading is when there is a sort of ombre effect when you write. As you are writing, the ink will pull to where you last lifted off the page, which will appear darker than when you first started writing with the pen. I think the easiest way to explain it is by writing. 
here and you can see as I'm writing with the pen, the ink is pooling towards the bottom, causing a darker look in the bottom. Here you can see as I am coloring in this block, the ink is pretty consistent, but once the ink starts pulling, you will see that it is a lot darker. A lot of people love this effect. I certainly do, but if you don't, there are also many other inks that are more uniform and consistent with low shading or absolutely no shading. The next ink property is the sheening ink. And this one has an almost metallic appearance in the light. It kind of reminds me of like an oil slick or like an oil puddle. Even though this ink is a green ink in the light, you'll see that it has a red metallic finish on top. You get that shiny effect without it clogging your nibs. And the next ink property is a shimmering ink. And these have glitters in it. Some of them are finer than others. Some of them have chunkier glitters. This one has a nice fine silver glitter to it. Sometimes these shimmering inks can include other properties as well, such as sheening and shading with them as well. The next ink property is chroma shading inks. Now this one is my absolute favorite. This is when an ink shows two or more colors as it shades. Some of them can have glitters in them, some of them can be sheening. This one is a standard ink, meaning no shimmering and no sheening, but oh my goodness, this one is beautiful. Another thing I want to touch on that a lot of people don't talk about either are the terms wet and dry in regards to an ink's flow or a pen's flow. Knowing the flow of your ink or pen is crucial to your writing experience. When talking about a pen's flow, a wet nib simply means that more ink flows out of it versus a drier nib, which means it has a more conservative flow. A wet ink, like the Pilot Iroshizuku, has more surfacance, which allows the ink to flow through a pen easily, and it will also feel smoother to write with, versus a dry ink, which will flow lightly through a pen. Now, this isn't a bad thing. Dry inks are wonderful, especially if you want to prevent smudging and want an ink that will dry a lot faster. You also have average flow inks, which are pretty much well-behaved inks that are neither too dry nor too wet. This is like the people pleaser ink and a lot of Sailor and Ferris Will Press inks are average inks. And as I mentioned earlier, it is so important to know whether you have a dry or a wet nib. For example, the pen that I was writing with earlier, the platinum celluloid one, that one for some reason is a drier nib, even though platinums tend to be wetter nibs. Now for this one, I have it inked with the Pilot Iroshizuku Takesumi. At first, I inked it with an average flowing ink and I honestly found the pen a little too scratchy and it really felt like I was writing with a needle. But once I inked it with the Pilot Iroshizuku, it just flows so beautifully. Now, if I inked a wet nib like my Caveco Medium or my Sailor Broad nib, those pens have a very wet flow, so it will just be an extremely juicy writing experience and may cause the line width to appear a bit thicker as well. 
Venice pens is a wonderful resource to find out whether a pen is a dry or a wet flow. But when it comes to whether a pen has a dry or a wet flow, I feel like this is something that you're gonna have to really try in person and test out a pen and really look at reviews to get a feel of whether a pen is either a wet or a dry flowing pen. And you can always get ink samples to try out for yourself in your pens and figure out what you like best. Now on to the how-to section of this video. On here I'm going to show you how to fill fountain pens. This one is a standard piston cartridge. There are some cartridges that you have to press with a button, but this is the most common type of cartridge you'll find. This one's super simple. Now I'm going to switch over to a side view so you can really see what's going on. When you are filling a pen, you want to make sure that the base of the grip section or the collar of the feed is dipped all the way into the ink. This is where the ink will pull. You want it to be fully submerged in that ink bottle. And if you can't do so, you will have to tilt the bottle and try to do this one-handed, which I have, or ask a friend to hold the bottle for you. From here, you're going to twist the knob on that converter and it will just draw up the ink into the reservoir. The same process applies to the piston filling pen, it's just 10 times bigger. <laughs> and you will do the same if you are trying to empty out the pen. You just turn it the opposite direction and empty the pen. To be quite honest with you, this is exactly how I clean my pens. I just do this multiple times with some fresh water. I'm not a person that likes to fully disassemble a pen because I feel like it's not really necessary to do so unless you have a shimmering ink or an ink that's really tough to clean. You can separate the nib from the grip section and soak that in water for a few hours to do a really deep cleaning as well as use a bulb syringe. I will link down below Goulet Pen's video because I am recording this on my desk with electronics so I don't want to have a water mess here and at least with the ink bottles it's a little more contained. For the vacuum filler, I already kind of showed you how to fill this pen in the pen anatomy portion. You unscrew the blind cap or the mechanical cap, which will release the plunger. And when you push down on that plunger, all the ink will come out and we'll start building that vacuum in the chamber. Right about here where I'm showing you is just about when the vacuum is ready to suck up all that ink. And here you can see on the first fill, you really fill up that chamber. There is a ton of ink in this pen. I'm going to show you how to fill this pen all the way if you wish to. You're going to slowly pull out that plunger again, a little less than halfway for this one since it's such a small amount of ink that I'll need. I'm going to push it up just before that vacuum threshold, which I will try to show you. And of course it wasn't in frame, but you'll see here as I'm dipping it, it, it's in the same location as I showed you earlier. And then from there, you just press that plunger in that ink bottle and it will fill it right up. I could do it again, 
but I feel like this is more than enough ink for this pen. The next one is the cartridge converter pen, and this one is the easiest one. This one is a plug and play. Just need a fresh cartridge. And when you pull out that cartridge, you will see a tiny little ball in there and that is just a seal and that ball will make its way towards the back of the cartridge and all you need to do is just push it in until you hear a little click and there you go you refilled your pen in like two seconds <laughs> and for some nibs you're going to want to keep that nib downward to allow gravity to pull the ink down or you can gently encourage the ink to flow by squeezing on the cartridge very lightly. I highly recommend keeping these because you can easily get a syringe, fill this up with any bottled ink of your choice. These cartridges hold a lot more ink than a converter will. This specific syringe, I got it from Jet Pens, and they're super cheap. Generally, what you do is either fill up the syringe with a ton of water and just blast all that ink out, or you can do what I'm doing here and just suck up all that ink, empty it out, and then flush the cartridge with a ton of water. I feel like any fountain pen owner needs to have a syringe with them. They are so versatile and you can even use them to fill a Twisby all the way through the feed, which is something I'm not going to show you right now. This is like intermediate level fountain pen. So for the sake of this video, I'll just keep it simple and easy. One of the last things I want to show you is how to change your pen's nib just in case this is something you would like to try switching out your nibs is super easy even though it seems intimidating it's not you just have to make sure you are very gentle with your nibs now you want to hold your nib evenly with your thumb and forefinger and just gently pull out and that's it and here you can really see how long a feed is and how tiny and thin that metal part of a nib really is. Now, when you're putting this nib back together, you will see some grooves that are shaped to the metal part of the nib, which will sit flush along that feed. It's kind of like a little puzzle piece. You want to make sure that that nib is in that perfect position. There is no way for it to really move around. It just fits perfectly. Now you want to hold it the same way with even pressure, nice and light, and just push it all the way through. You want to make sure that nib and feed are all the way in there to prevent any leaks. I highly recommend before purchasing any gold nib or any super expensive nib that you go for a cheaper option where you can play around with the different nib sizes and just take apart your pen and really get to know every part of that pen. Now there are some cheaper pens on Amazon that you can go to but I always recommend either Twisby or any of the Cavecos because they are just so easy. A Twisby is perfect for someone that is going to use bottled inks exclusively or that has larger hands that need a bigger pen. 
And as I've mentioned many times in my videos, the Caveco Sport is one of my absolute favorites. It is tiny, it is versatile, you can use it with a cartridge, you can use it with a converter, you can add a clip to it, you can switch out the nibs. It is just a fantastic pen to play around with. If you ruin anything on the pen, you can easily replace it. This is probably the longest video that I'll ever have on YouTube. I just wanted to recap a little on what we just touched on with fountain pens, just to help you find a fountain pen that will work best for you. When you are purchasing a pen, some things that you should consider are the nib size. Remember, both the actual nib size, whether it's a smaller nib or a larger nib, and also the line width. If you are a person that writes small or are used to fine liners or fine pens, I would totally go with an extra fine or a fine. And if you're a person like me that loves really, really fine pens, totally go through the Japanese nib brow and get yourself an extra fine pen. <laughs> The next thing to consider is the filling mechanism. Are you a person that wants to have a cartridge for travel? Are you a person that wants to use bottled ink only? Maybe you would like a piston. Or are you a person that travels a lot and maybe you'd like to have a vac fill? Vac fills are really good for traveling since you need to unscrew a vac fill pen in order to use it and once you screw that pen closed there is no ink coming out of that pen the next thing to consider is the overall pen size for example if you're looking at pocket pens you might want to think about whether you are okay with only using a cartridge or filling up a cartridge with a syringe every time you want to use a bottled ink. Or you may want to have a standard pen that can use a cartridge or a converter. That is all a personal preference. The last thing you might want to consider is a pen's versatility. Perhaps you would want something more like the Caveco that you can easily go on jet pens or anywhere and purchase a replacement nib of any size if that fine nib didn't work out with you great you could just go and purchase the broad nib maybe you'll like that one more or even a cap maybe you cracked a cap you can go ahead and email twisby and they will send you a brand new cap for just a few dollars and you'll quickly have your favorite pen back in working order i hope you guys enjoyed this video and more importantly found it helpful for your fountain pen journey if you have any questions please leave it down below in the comments or feel free to message me on instagram let me know down below what was your first fountain pen? Or if you are new to fountain pens, which fountain pen are you thinking of getting? Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.